Okay, so we're here in DC after a seven hour car ride for the March for Our Lives protest. So right now we're about to go on the subway. We're heading to Pennsylvania Avenue and that's where the march is gonna start. We're gonna go see what the people have to say about the most polarizing issue in America right now. All of us got together to go report on this protest, and we honestly don't really know what we're doing. We don't know exactly what to expect, nor do we know how to prepare for what's to come. Okay, but what is the March for Our Lives movement? Their website stated three primary demands to stop the sale of high-capacity magazines, to implement laws that require background checks on all gun purchases, including gun shows and online, and to pass a law to ban assault weapons. But we'll get back to that later. I think the, I think the gun re regulation debate has been controlled by people who don't know that much about guns for way too long. And what that does is it enables the NRA ideology to kind of silence those voices. So if you want to talk about guns and weapons, what they're capable of, ask a veteran. You guys spent the money to train us. And in knowing what they're capable of, I can say, yeah, we need regulation. And we need it badly and soon. And I just want you to see the amount of people that are here. It's ridiculous. It took us 35 minutes to move 15 feet in line. It was, it was, uh, and this is, it's just powerful. Look at the, the amount of people here. It's, you know, you see people. What made you come out here? What, what brought you here? Yeah, I'm a mom of three young children and I live here in DC and my kids actually had a lockdown on Monday afternoon at their school. There were gunshots a couple blocks away at a car. Um, and that, I had been debating coming and then that happened on Monday and I felt like it's important to make sure our voices are heard. Right now I'm standing behind the stage here at the March for Our Lives protest in Washington, DC. As I'm sitting here, I'm looking out and I'm wondering how students pulled off such a massive national protest in only five weeks. Luckily enough, I wrote down some key pieces of information before I got here. A protest of this magnitude needs financial backing. A GoFundMe campaign to support the rally raised more than $1.7 million in only three days, and the last time we checked, it was almost $4 million. And to add to that, an estimated $2 million in private donations from celebrities including Oprah Winfrey, George Clooney, and Steven Spielberg. Another thing that we have to take into account is that momentum for this issue has grown exponentially just within the past month. Several major companies cut ties with the NRA, the CNN Town Hall with Marco Rubio, and another 800 March for Our Lives protests organized across the US and internationally in cities including London, Madrid, and Tokyo. Okay, right now we are behind the scenes here at March for Our Lives. Uh, we have Jacob in Boston. He's going to take you around. He's going to show you what's going on there. I'm reporting live here in Boston, Massachusetts. Right now we're in the Boston Common where the March for Our Lives march is underway. Behind me we have the counter protesters. There's, they're all surrounded by a riot squad of policemen. Um, a lot of them have deep support for the NRA and the Second Amendment. I give my first name. Okay, first I'm, name. I'm Mark, and I'm with Resist Marxism. Okay, so why are you here today? We are here to defend the Second Amendment and show support for gun rights in the face of the media and politicians. Okay, so you believe that? So do you believe that any citizen should have the right to own assault rifles or anything like that? If you're a law-abiding citizen with no criminal record, you should have a right to bear, an arm, bear arms. Yes. Okay, so do you believe in strengthening the background checks? Uh, I support what the NRA supports as far as uh, the, the states cooperating more with the background check system so that a person commits a crime in one state, another state will know about it. I do support that, yes. I do not support uh, background checks as far as trying to disarm the population. Yeah. So do you support arming teachers with weapons? I don't support, I don't think anyone supports just handing out guns to teachers. There's definitely a lot of teachers that have served in the military or have firearms experience. 
if they have a concealed carry permit and they have the training, I would support them having guns, yes. Okay, so what do you think about the police officers that were at the park and shooting that did not? That said, well, that's one thing I'm confused about these people. They're saying that they want to disarm the populace and they don't want to have guns, but they've seen the police sometimes can't be relied upon. Now those police, that was, that was horrific what those police officers did by not going to school, that was a joke. Black people, black men make up 6% of all males in the United States. They also commit like 60% of all violent murders used with guns, right? No, 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 so, no, 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 here's what he's trying to get at. He's trying to get at, like, we're not saying, we're not saying that, you know, that is, that black people are more poor than We're not saying any of that, we're not saying it's 80%. We're saying statistically, okay? Yeah. Blacks, black, black people make, black men make up 6% of the population, okay. and yet, there are responsible for 50% of all gun-related deaths and murders. Okay. What's worse? is that this ceaseless and preventable violence only further perpetuates racism as black men are 13 times more likely than non-Hispanic white men to be shot and killed with guns. So right now I'm at the March for Our Lives. We're at the actual stage right now. Behind me there are thousands of kids. I mean, they're all high school students. This isn't about the adults showing up. While there is a lot of them out here, here at the stage it, it really is mostly kids. and. It, it's really empowering to see that they really are about this movement and that they're here to create change. And it's just, I think it means a lot that they're here in support and, and standing for those that couldn't be here because their lives were taken, unfortunately. As I sit here, I'm realizing that I'm getting so emotional about this. And now I really know why we're here. So what do you think about a about the superintendent of a northeastern Pennsylvania school arming a school with a bucket of rocks to defend themselves in the wake of a active school shooting? I think it's a cynical joke. It's, 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 it's crazy. You know, I mean, if you have to resort to throwing rocks, I mean, I think they could come up with something better. You know, but I think it speaks to the futility that people in administrations and schools and things like, how are they supposed to handle this? The laws the way they are would allow anyone to bring guns in to, to schools. Throwing rocks is, is not going to help. Oh yeah, and like I thought we were going to come here and just report on it and I never felt like I was a part of this movement until I was here. Yeah. And when we're picking up the cameras and we're pointing them at people and they're telling us how they feel, it affects we're a part you, of this movement. It affects I just gotta say, the experience here was amazing. There were so many people, and to see so many people from all around the country come together for one movement, uh, that was really touching and humbling for me. So you can see here in Washington, D.C., um, the streets are dying down, the protest is pretty much over, the streets are clearing up, and you can see the posters they made for the protest are pretty much on the trash. But is, it, is this movement gonna die down? Are they gonna do anything about this at the end? Two, three hours ago, these streets were absolutely full with energy and signs and life. And um, it, it, this leaves me thinking, what, what comes next after this protest? After all the signs are you know, thrown away and after the people are gone, what comes next for us? How do we achieve this change that we're looking for? 6,929 soldiers have died since 9-11. Whereas at least 7,640 kids have been killed by guns in Sandy Hook in 2012. As well, over 100 bills calling for stricter gun control have been introduced to Congress since Sandy Hook, yet all have been killed. Guns are an issue here in America, and we can't ignore the fact that they are. Placing restrictions on guns with high capacity magazines can help form a solution. But we can't completely take guns away from Americans. There's already over 300 million guns in the hands of civilians. Meaning that although legislation can help, America needs a societal shift. Addressing mental health issues, placing politics aside, and simply caring about each other is just a start.